because I was choosing to be a victim. We're not doing that no more. We're stepping fully into the authority this week, okay? Racking my weights is ghetto. Where is my man? Whole Foods. <laughs> I can only do so much. It doesn't matter what your intentions were. The fact that it wasn't convenient, you chose to do something that you had no business doing. I want a black love and I want my black man, period. And so there's a white dude on the team and he was like, what do you mean? Ugh. And I knew that I had emotional ties to it, but I really didn't know where it stemmed from. I don't trust that you're going to provide, so I'm going to do things my way to make sure I get some coins. Why would you spend so much time about things that don't matter when this was a whole blessing? Kenzie, this has nothing to do with you and everything to do with him. I'm happy that she was able to witness how God be playing in my face sometimes. Because I feel like people be thinking I'm dramatic. I don't give a damn that you're tired. You was big and bad enough to eat all of that goddamn pizza. You gonna be big and bad enough to sit up here and finish this session out. Literally holding a meeting right now on how to bag this man. Like, they don't even know that we're about to bag this man. You don't deserve that. You don't deserve that. You gotta do better. Hey everybody, it's so it is Monday and it is 6.05 right now. I'm coming to y'all from the sauna because I know when I go home, I want to listen to some gospel music um, and just get the vibes right. So I'm on. I'm in here by myself. So I was like, why not? Happy Monday, y'all. When I tell you the gym is truly my playground, I had a time in here, okay? First of all, my morning started off pretty rough because I got here at like 3.10, but for some reason, my headphones decided they didn't want to work. And for some reason, I didn't want to go in with just my cord headphones, like the normal headphones. So what did I do? I wasted 30 minutes of my time trying to figure out why my headphones weren't working. So 30 minutes later, I ended up fixing it and they worked. So I was just like, whatever. But that was a rough start. But it's fine. It's neither here nor there. They're not broken. They just had a moment. Um, I came in. I did my thousand jumps. I did some leg extensions, some leg presses, and some leg curls. And then I was like... Let's go to the lifting section and let's see what we can deadlift today because y'all know I've been talking about trying to figure out what my max is because last week I deadlifted 300 pounds like it was nothing. Y'all, I should have recorded it and I'm going to get y'all some gym footage. I'm going to get back to what I used to do. I could not get 300. I stopped at 285. I couldn't even pick up 285. What the hell? How did I do 300? And it's just funny, I'm like, was that God giving me a sneak peek into something just to kind of steer me and guide me into an area? You know what I mean? Because, huh? How did I do 300? But today I couldn't have picked up 285. But what I think it was and what I'm going to do differently, uh, the lifts were the last thing that I did for the day, right? Like I did all my workouts and then did the deadlifts. So my muscles were probably already worn and torn. The next time I try it, I want to make sure that I do it the first thing so I have all of my strength. So we're going to do that next time and see if that makes a difference. But yeah, 285, I tried it like 10 times. It wasn't even getting up. I got it up like a little bit on my shins and I was like, all right, we're, we're done. We're done. Um, so I played around with that for a bit. And then after that, I went to this little belt squat machine. It took me forever to figure out how to do it. Like I'm one of those people like I'll try to YouTube how to do it first. I couldn't figure it out. It was like 15 minutes. I'm like, I'm wasting time. So I just ended up going to the desk and like, hey, can you show me how to work this? And he was like, yeah, cool. So I have fun on that. And I love how deep my squats were able to be on there. So I was like, oh, yeah, this is about to be good to me. And then, y'all, I killed myself on the Stairmaster. 30 minutes. I am so shocked that I did 30 minutes after that crucial leg day. But like, I've been listening to David Goggins a lot lately and he's really a person that you can listen to like if he could do it there's really no possible excuse that i can make up for myself like when i was on that stairmaster and i was like i want to quit this dude is in my ear talking about how he was running with broken legs running with blood coming out his pee hole and like you know crazy stuff and so it really just motivates me that you really can push yourself beyond what it is that you think you're capable of like you don't even know what you're capable of for real <sighs> Yo, i'm hot um, I feel really good though. I'm going to strive to have the best week this week. You know, last week was really hard for me and it was all because I was choosing to disobey God. It was all because I was choosing to be a victim. We're not doing that no more. We're stepping fully into the authority this week. Okay. So we're going to be on it and we're going to talk more about this later. Uh, but I was listening to something about David Goggins this morning. There were like short clips and I kept going to different ones. 
but he was talking about how rent is due every day. And I know like I'll jokingly sometimes be like, made my deposit today. But at the end of the day, we know the gym is not my problem, it's the food. So I'm like, Kenzie, the same way you're like, I gotta make it to the gym today, I just have to. Every time you eat, I'm gonna need you to have that same kind of attitude. Is this paying your rent or is this tearing up your home? I'm gonna have to start trying, y'all know I be having to like think of things and analogies to really make stuff click for me. Because it's like, I'm tired of feeding my body junk and I'm tired of when my emotions get the best of me. And I'm tired of when I get stressed, allowing my feelings to just dictate how I move. And I'm tired, I just, I can't, I can't do that anymore. I really can't do it anymore. Like I really, I'm not beating myself up or anything, but it really feels like I'm starting from ground one. Like my stomach looks like hell. And it's just cause it's bloated cause I've been eating chunk. Anyway, I'm about to head out here. Oh, before I go, it was so bomb. I know I was doing good for a black king to come and comment me, okay? So it was funny cause over there in the lifting section, there was a dude that was like right next to me and he was deadlifting too. And you guys come on in. He was deadlifting too. And I was like, you need to come over here. You know, don't mind me. <laughs> no, girl, you um, he was in the corner deadlifting too. And I was like, okay, Black King, come over here and bring back my weight. And, and so that was cool. But after I got done deadlifting, he had came over and he was like, I see you lifting that weight. And I was like, period. Anyway, people are in here. I felt awkward. Okay, bye. Operation post surgery. You resist the surgery and settle for the symptoms. I want us to see this, this text in Matthew that I believe will better corroborate. We're going to launch our reading at verse 1, read a few passages of scripture, and pop Matthew chapter 23, verse 1. If you're ready to see here, I know that I read the Bible that there was one to morning prayer, and there was a little box that had scriptures in it. On their arm and also on their forehead. They were literally a Look at this. Look at how good. Wide. So we're doing the Texas pulled pork. Let's see this seasoning. Planet. Stop playing with me. And when David said uh, in Psalm 23, verse 5, the Lord prepares the table for me in the presence of my Jesus. Enemies. He anoints my head because you can't discern dirty cups. She fine. It was dirty. <laughs> he look good, don't he, sis? He got money. That's dirty money. The inside of the cup is dirty. I know that ministry is popular and everybody's drinking from there. But how do you notice know once you drink the backwash, so you won't do it? Come on. Who does it? <laughs> it's not microwaves. He crock pots. I know that this is a problem because whenever we don't like something, whenever God processes us, when he places us in a revelation, you just like microwaves. Jesus. I heard your prayers. You're just not seasoned yet. Keep on treating the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Nine words. Everything they do is done for people to see. They love attention. I was cautioning some of my pastor friends. Be careful with wanting to go viral. Jesus. Y'all ready for the wordplay? Mm -hmm. They love attention. Mm -hmm. That's their infection. So since they love going viral, we have a viral infection. <laughs> this is so good, y'all. Viral infection infected with attention. Let's speak around that thought for part one of our brand new symptom series. Let's speak around this thought, viral infection. <laughs> the dangerous thing with the church that I'm recognizing is a lot of Christians are asymptomatic. They don't know the infections that they have, so they keep spreading it to others. And due to the pastors caring more about your tithes and your offerings more than do your soul, they will preach symptomatic sermons mm. to keep you okay with treating your symptoms. When God is saying, no, I need to do surgery. Thank you, man. Slash out loud, funny joke, and you're in silver punch bullets. Easy pill, this is so good. So that I can cure it. Can I get all of us to say this confession? As loud as you can. I want us to really mean this. If you're watching online, could you put this in the room in all caps? Can I get us to say, Father? Father? Cleanse me on the inside. 
Cleanse me on the inside. I don't, I don't just want relief. I don't just want relief. I want you, period. I want you, period. One more time. Father. Father. Cleanse me on the inside. Cleanse me on the inside. I don't just want relief. I don't just want relief. Don't clap. I feel a little hooked. You know, I just don't want relief. I just don't want relief. I want you, period. I want you, period. And anybody that is at that place, I want you, period. I was a junior, Texas Southern University. I know, right? I'm saying, <laughs> junior, Texas Southern University, public address 101. There was this young lady that was a part of my study group. She always had this vibe, similar to the one that you were getting as you came in the sacred sanctuary. She always had this medication in her hand. And my heart would ache for her because she would have excruciating migraines. Sometimes I would see tears rolling down her cheek mid-lecture of our professor. I would tap her sometimes and say, you all right? She said, Jerry, these, these migraines are so bad. Sometimes they blur my vision. Jesus. I was trying to walk up the stairs yesterday. And I was losing my balance. It just hurts. And she just disappeared one day. I didn't see her Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I wasn't as concerned until the second week. The second week when she didn't meet us in the library, didn't meet us in the rec center, as we were studying for our test and our midterms, I didn't have her number. I didn't know she lived on campus. She was truly just a colleague of mine. I began to wonder, so I prayed for her. Another week went by, didn't see her. Then randomly one night, as we're in the library studying, she walks in. I'm like, girl. It turns in three weeks. What you, where you been? She said, Jerry, put, put your hand right here. Put my hand. She said, you feel that? Yeah. She said, I, I have a tumor. And she said, you know what the crazy thing was? I didn't even know. I've been treating the symptoms of a tumor. Jesus. For the last two years. I have to get surgery. So I was speaking to my professor, my the dean, to see if there's some way I can still get the assignments after this, this surgery. But the part that's tripping me out, a doctor gave me medication without ever doing an MRI or oh, scan Lord. to ever see What's the cause? Mel practice at his finest. She said, this whole time, I've been treating symptoms. Y'all hold your little bottle up. Hold your little bottle up. Get it out your purse. I'll wait. Hear me prophetically. This whole time, is it possible You've been treating symptoms and tolerating tumors. Jesus. The weed, that's a symptom of no peace. The hookah bar, that's a symptom of no peace. Your sleeping pills Ooh. that you're trying to pop every single night. All it is is a symptom of you trying to find rest outside of Jesus. This is why the naps don't fix it. The vacation doesn't fix it. The vacation doesn't fix it. You can be off for holidays, but you're still tired. You're popping medication, but Jesus is saying you can put it down. Okay, so we're on our way to work. The sermon that I was listening to was so freaking good. It was Jerry Flowers, and I think it was called Viral Infection. And it's so funny how the Lord quickly corrected me because like I told y'all last week, I haven't really been on top of my sermons like I usually do since my cardio has changed and I only do like 30 minutes on the um, Stairmaster. So everything is just kind of a bit different. And so like when I got home, I was watching like YouTube vlogs and stuff and I just heard him say, turn the sermon on. And I was like, I don't want to. So just again, like, what, bro, why are you disobeying me? And I was like, no, I don't want to. So I kept watching my vlog and I just kept hearing, turn a sermon on. 
Like, are you wanting to prep your mind for the day? Are you wanting to build yourself up? Like, or not? Nah? Like, what are you doing? And I was like, okay, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. And so Sarah, I don't want to say I wasn't in the mood for Sarah, but I feel like Sarah's, I have to be focused. Like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to explain it, but like for Sarah, I need to be focused and I need to be looking at her and see what's going on. But Jerry Flowers is somebody that I can like put on and do things kind of like a podcast type of thing. And boy, I chose the perfect one. Viral infection, he was mostly talking about how a lot of us Christians will be treating the symptom and not wanting to dig deeper into seeing what the root cause of it is. Like even looking at my antidepressants, I'm treating a symptom, but the root is where is Jesus in my life, right? Just, mm, it was just so good. He's talking about like, we freaking want a microwave type of God. God said, we, okay, Ugh. I can even like put my thoughts together for real. But we sit up here and we pray for one thing and God answers another prayer and then we get upset. And this is so me because I'm like, okay, that was cool, God. But I pray for this, not knowing that God's not treating the symptom. He is curing the cause. He is fixing the root. I don't know exactly like how he worded it. Y'all was hearing and stuff. Anyway, um, not knowing that what it is that God has done is going to produce what it is that you're wanting in the end. And I thought that was just so good. Um, I'm going to have to finish it when I get to work. The breakfast was so fire. That breakfast is so fire. So I had the Texas pulled pork for Just Meats from Just Meats. And that's definitely my favorite right now. I cut it up. I don't know if y'all saw that. But I cut up the pulled pork because last time I didn't cut it up, it was just so long and stringy and, you know, like thick and stuff. You lucky I didn't speed because I don't like when people do that. Lucky I got the Lord. Um, so yeah, I cut it up so I had like small little bits of pieces, but that's like the best breakfast for me right now. And I was gonna like wrap it up in tortillas, but then I was like, why would you waste the carbs when you really don't even need that for real? So I had three eggs, but I could definitely do two eggs. So I'll probably do two eggs tomorrow and one hash brown. I don't need two hash browns. My eyes be bigger than my stomach. Um so I'm going to do two eggs with some pulled pork and sprinkle of that little barbecue sauce and some hash browns. Oh, that was fire. And now I feel ready to get on with the day and have a great day. I'm going to be very conscious about what it is that I'm putting into my body because I just, I just can't, we can't keep doing this, Bookies. If I'm going to be showing up on this camera, I at least want to be showing up progressing and not just continuing to show up with excuses. You know what I mean? So maybe my thing is before I put anything in my mouth, go pick up this camera and document it for the tube of the use. How about that? So we're going to try that. But it was funny because I know when I was in the sauna, I got cut off because some girls had came in and I got nervous. But it was really funny because I was on TikTok live. I was on TikTok live and when I was over there lifting, there was this dude next to me and he was dead lifting too. And so I'm like joking and I'm like, Lord, I just can't wait till it's my turn and you send me my man and we can be in the gym together. You know what I mean? And I'll be like, babe, wrap this up. Like racking my weights is ghetto and then taking them off. Well, putting them on and taking them off is ghetto. Where is my man? And so that was just so funny. And then when I got off a lot, because my friend had got there, he had came over and I don't remember what he said verbatim, but he was talking about, I was seeing you lifting all that weight. That's crazy. Like good job type shit. Nah, I said type shit. Jesus, hell. Um, anyway, how old are you? Kinsey freaking 20. Girl. <laughs> but anyway, I was like, yeah, that's what's up. And so then we started talking or whatever, Kiki and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that's funny. And so we followed each other on Instagram. But his Instagram in the bio says Mary, so I'm like, oh, that's not the one. <laughs> uh, but still, it's pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah. Y'all, I can't wait to get to work because when I be at work, I be like on my crime story type stuff because I can watch crime stories at work, but I can't watch them at home because I get scared and nervous. But I'm not scared at work because I'm surrounded by all these people. So, yeah, the odds are better against me. Uh, I don't know. Have y'all been looking into the Micah Miller thing? Was it Miller? It was Miller. Micah Miller? I think it was in Florida. Well, I think she offed herself in North Carolina. So they say. It's funny that I'm talking about this too because get the heck away from me, bro. There's a dude on my team and he was like, I should have a crime channel on YouTube, like talking about stories. Because y'all, I really be on my crime story stuff and I really be talking to people and giving them the tea for real. So Micah Miller, 
y'all i'm not starting this i'm not starting this anyway don't get me started y'all y'all gonna have the best monday of y'all's lives today don't let nobody tell you a mug thing about yourself know who you are within the lord christ your savior and make it do what it do mm -hmm. Hey bookies, it is Monday. It is currently 327. I took off of work a bit early because I have some errands to run on the other side of town. And yeah, y'all know I don't like being stuck in traffic and I'm extremely tired. I am so tired because last night, I don't remember if I told you guys or not, but last night was one of the nights where it's like, I think because I was napping so much on Sunday when it was time to go to sleep, I really couldn't go to sleep for real. So I was just up and restless and now that sleepiness is hitting me. So yeah, and I'm also having been taking my second dose of Oxy Shred, um, and that's for no particular reason. I think I've honestly just been forgetting it at home. But anywho, right now I'm at Whole Foods, so y'all know what that means. We're getting back into our salads because I truly love salads. Like you know how some people be like, I'm on a diet, so we gotta eat salad. Like no, I love me some salads. So I'm coming here for my lettuce and Parmigiano Reggiano, and honestly. I don't know if I need any more Parmigiano because the last time I bought some, it was like a month ago, but I didn't use it. But y'all know, I don't know how long cheese lasts and I don't want to take the risk of going home and looking at it and it's trash and then I don't have any. So that's what I get for deciding to be out in these fast food streets. Now I just wasted a great block of cheese. So we're going to go in here. I said for three to four things, I'm going in for some lettuce, Parmigiano, and then some sweet snacks. Um, I want to find something sweet that will satisfy my craving. As of late, I've been eating like a lot of yogurt, but I want other things. So I don't know if that's just going to be like strawberries and some whipped cream or what, but I know I want something for my sweet tooth. Um, and then after this, we're going to go home. I wanted to tidy up the house a little bit as much as I can. Again, just to make sure I can have the best week that I can. My friend is possibly picking up the couch today. So it's just a lot of small things, but I was like, baby, my bedtime is nine o'clock. My bedtime is nine o'clock. Anyway, oh my God, y'all, and I'm so uncomfortable. I don't know what happened. Like in my whole 27 years of life, I have never gotten a rash on my boob. And this might be like, if this shirt looks weird, it's because there's a bra pad in here that I like fixated. Anyway, in my 27 years of life, I've never had no issues with my skin for real. And I don't know, I think it's this freaking new body wash. And that's why I don't freaking try new things. I have rashes under my boobs, bro. And it itches. And that's too why I wanted to get the freak home so I can get comfortable and take bras off and let it breathe. Because why I feel like that, I don't even, well, I was about to say I don't know what it is. But I, the only thing that has changed is this freaking body wash. And the only reason I got that body wash is because they were out of my normal body wash. What I love is the dial, the gold one. I think it's called marula oil. And I'll mix that with the uh, peppermint oil, pastels, or whatever the heck you call it. And those are my go-to. And honestly, I've been using that combo for a very long time. And it's my favorite. It's my OG. But no, they didn't have it. So I decided to get some freaking Dove cherry milk. And I think it messed me up, bro. Anyway. Before I go in, here's what my water is looking like. We are definitely going to finish it. We've done good on the eating. Y'all saw what I ate this morning. I haven't ate anything else throughout the day. And so, yeah, we about to mess the salad up and we about to end the night. Before I even get to going home, let me tell you something. Whole Foods. <laughs> I can only do so much. I can only do so much. It's my fault because I come here for my lettuce and stuff. Um, but man, I don't, I don't do well with entitled white people. I don't do well with entitled white people. Two things happened today. So this girl literally almost ran me over with her cart. Didn't say excuse me nothing. A matter of fact, she looked at me like I was the problem and I was in the way. Okay, we're going to keep it cute. We're going to keep it cute. And then I'm freaking in line and this lady decides to make a line somewhere else. And then when we're moving forward, she's going to sit up there and act like she's going to move forward like she was the next. <laughs> go, go play with somebody else go play with somebody else and so when that lady went up that was in front of me i respectfully <laughs> excuse me i was next stop playing with me stop playing with me i'm ready to go home i don't even want to be here right now anyway so i ended up just getting they didn't have the same kind of lettuce and so i just got two of these little babies butterhead lettuce i got me some fresh strawberries 
they didn't have i mean i'm sure they had whipped cream but i wasn't trying to look around for it for real and if they did have whipped cream i'm pretty sure it was like ten dollars i don't got time so my sweet tooth for the night i just got me some um golden round crackers ritz crackers and probably gonna make me some peanut butter crackers and call it a night anyway y'all i'm about to go home and i don't know if i'll be talking to y'all later i might show y'all how bomb this salad is but other than that get me out the streets hey bookies it is tuesday and it's 505 i'm so excited because we're going to a cycling class last night i literally barely made it it's insanity how quick these spots feel i think there's 20 spots every day or like for the most part every single day and the time opens at eight for the next day i clicked on it at 801 and it was only five spots left i'm like relax but then it's people like me like i'll be in there i'll be waiting right so I'm super excited. However, what I'm not excited about is doing cycling, knowing that I haven't ate well today. And I had intentions, and this is why you have to meal prep, because like if you had your meal prep there, you would have been okay. It doesn't matter what your intentions were. The fact that it wasn't convenient, you chose to do something that you had no business doing. Lesson learned. But I'm gonna give myself grace up until the point that I move, because bro, it is what it is. Um, so they had pizza today for lunch, so I ended up having pizza, and then one of my weaknesses is popcorn. I, I love me some popcorn, and it wasn't normal popcorn. They had like this, uh, we appreciate you department kind of thing, so downstairs they had all kinds of popcorn. They had Parmesan garlic. Y'all, that popcorn was so freaking good. Extra butter. They had, they had all kinds, okay? Jalapeno Ridge and Baby I had a best time with all of them. Multiple bags um and one of my things was i had told my friend trey i was like bro cycling is going to be really good for me because it's a huge incentive for me to want to eat well because there's no way that you can show up to these cycling classes and have a great experience knowing you ate like crap now thankfully i don't feel like i ate horribly like it's nothing crazy heavy on my stomach to where i'm like oh i'm gonna throw up but i just know that i don't want to feel this way so i'm gonna have to clean it up hold on don't talk to me right now i gotta focus oh Oh, I don't like merging. It really gives me anxiety. It gives me anxiety. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Every time I have to merge, I just got to say thank you, Lord, because merging is so scary to me. And then people don't be wanting you to merge. And it's like, bro, you know, this lane is ending. Like, what do you want me to do? <sighs> anyway, so I'm going to have to get better at the eating, but it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. I do plan to like start meal prepping again. And honestly, y'all, these probably just all are excuses, but there's just so much going on. The last thing I'm thinking about is meal prepping. Like, it's it's an excuse, but it is what it is. But once I move in, which I move next Friday, I definitely plan to get back on top of all of those things. Right now, I'm like just focusing on the adulting necessities and then everything else later. But anyway, I'm excited because after cycling, I'm going to just probably finish out with later workouts this week because I have a volleyball game tomorrow after work too. And which means that because I'll be out late tomorrow and won't be in bed in a timely manner. And y'all know I'm trying to prioritize sleep because that's what the man was talking to me about. That means, uh-huh. That means that uh, I probably shouldn't wake up that morning to go to the gym. So I might be a night girly again. So we'll just have to see how that goes. But after cycling today, I do plan to make me a chicken Caesar salad. Y'all know that's like my favorite thing ever. And I know that's going to hit. And then watch my shows. Y'all, I'm so excited because I am a sucker for getting like a trial experience and just putting it in my calendar when it's time to cancel the trial. But I ain't even going to hold you. I don't know if I'm going to cancel it. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to cancel it. I don't know. So it's for YouTube TV. And honestly, the only reason that I got it, I don't know if y'all know this show called Ready to Love, but I do like all my lovey shows because I'm a lover girl down, period. So there's a show called Ready to Love and it's like mature black singles. And I love it so much because first of all, it's all black people. And then second of all, they're all like over the age of 30 or 40 or something. And so it's like no mess. It's not supposed to be no drama. Of course, sometimes there's drama, but anywho, it's like 10 black singles men and women and they end up doing their whole process and whoever don't find a mate basically like you got to get up out of here so i wanted to see the finale and philo freaking takes forever to update stuff so i cancel follow because i'm like y'all don't be with the ish for real and so because philo wasn't with the ish for real i was like i'm gonna go over here to youtube tv 
and they have a trial period and I'm having a time because not only do they allow you to watch like series of like episodes and stuff, but there's live TV too. And I think that is a hell of a deal. So I don't know if I'm a one apart ways after this trial because I love it. I love it so much. So originally I went there for ready to love, but I stayed because of SWAT. SWAT is like my favorite series show ever. And it makes me want to be on a SWAT team, even though I know I wouldn't be able to last. I do wish and hope for in another life that I have this uh, toughness to be on a SWAT team member. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, it's on Netflix and Netflix has six series. And I tell you, when I freaking finish the six seasons of SWAT, I didn't know what to do with my life. It's freaking six seasons. So like I'm used to every night, what are we doing? We're watching SWAT. We have episodes galore. It's like 20 episodes in one season. When I finished, I didn't know what to do with myself. But YouTube TV, something just told me, Kenzie, look up SWAT. Y'all, they have season seven on SWAT and there's so many episodes that I am just having a ball like looking up. So I'm like, okay, clearly following with the, sh but YouTube is period. So I might keep them. It was so funny, y'all, before I left work, we were talking about my friend. Um, so my friend, she was talking about she had a little crushy crush in the hallway. And I was like, oh, that's cute or whatever. Oh, yeah, I'm getting this spot and I'm in the wrong way, but best believe I'm taking it. She was talking about uh, she saw a crush in the hallway and I was like, OK, she didn't know his name. So I was like, was he a white man? Was he a black man? She said he was white. And like, y'all, I'm not a racist person. I'm not a racist person. But like naturally out of my mouth, I was like, Ugh. I didn't mean to do that. I really didn't. But like my preference, y'all know I'm, I'm down hard for my black kings. I want a black love and I want my black man, period. And so there's a white dude on the team and he was like, what do you mean? Ugh. And I'm like, here we go. I said, bro, it's just my preference. I don't, I'm not racist. I don't care. Like I would date a white man. It's just not my preference. He didn't want to grasp that concept. And he's just convinced that I'm racist. And I just thought that was so funny. Anyway, yeah, he, he, he had a thing to feel about that and i'm just like boy if you don't move on somewhere i said what i said i want to love me down a black man and i'm gonna stand on that period unless the lord tells me otherwise like what do you want from me what do you want from me what do you want from me that was excessive i am so excited to be here if you cannot tell i told myself i was gonna get an energy drink but did i do it no i didn't no, I didn't because I feel like I've already ate so many not so good things. Why would I drink an energy drink and then go cycle? I feel like I might SHIT myself. So instead, I have my Oxy Shred here, but I did forget a cup. So I might dry scoop it. Actually, I got all this stuff in my backseat. I have a cup because I have all these cups in my backseat that I was going to give my friend. I think I might just use one of those. She can still get the cup, but I'm going to just use one of those. Yeah. It's crazy when I tell y'all I'm giving everything away. So like you guys are going to have to watch that moving vlog. It'll be posted closer to next week because it's honestly just a lot of snippets of me moving and my raw emotions of it. And so if you want to see how I felt like it literally last night when everything happened, then make sure you tune into that vlog. But my friend came and got my couch last night and my mama bought me all of that furniture. So like I knew that I had emotional ties to it, but I really didn't know where it stemmed from. And so once my friend got it and like it became real that she's taking my stuff, I was like, I feel like those were the last memories that I had of my mom. And those that are new here, my mom is not dead. She just chooses not to be a part of my life. And it's been very hurtful. It's very traumatizing. But God, I'm OK. And it is what it is. And I, I pray for her healing. I pray that she's OK. But we just don't speak. And it's it's always going to be hurtful. But your girl is good. Um. So knowing that that was like my last good memory that I had of her, because she bought me all that furniture. It was a very happy experience, my first apartment, and we're just having a great time seeing her take that away. It was just very emotional for me. And it was funny because I sold all of my furniture. I've sold it all but my table. And so, again, I've told you all so many times, the worst thing that could happen, in my opinion, is that it comes to move in day and I still have huge pieces of furniture because I'm not getting a move in truck. I'm literally doing it all my, myself and some family members are helping. I don't want to have that big furniture because where is it going to go? It's not going into my new house. Where is it going to go? You know what I mean? Um, so with that being said, I was like, do you want this table? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, girl, take it. She was like, are you serious? I said, girl, take it. 
girl, take it. Like, of course, I would have loved to profit from it. I would have loved to make money from it. But at the end of the day, that would be greedy. I didn't pay for these things. My mom did. So who am I to be sitting up here wanting a bag from it, you know? And then two, just really, I'm learning that, like, I feel like I'm being tested in so many ways because it's like me wanting to hold on to things, to sell them, knowing I really don't have to, but knowing it would just be good to have some money. I feel like that's kind of telling the Lord, I don't trust that you're going to provide. So I'm going to do things my way to make sure I get some coins. And it's like, no, freely and cheerfully, kind of like they say, be a cheerful giver. Give your stuff away and bless somebody else with it and trust that it's going to be fine. Like, I'm not going to be down bad because I didn't make some coins from this table. I'm not going to be down bad because I didn't sell my couch for $1,000. Like, girl, get out of the way. It's going to be fine. So I was like, girl, take this. And I was like, while you're here, I was like, let me look around my house real quick. You want this? You want this? There was a stair stepper that I bought because TikTok impulsive buyer made me do it it was so stupid to think about it. i was like kenzie why would you buy a stair stepper knowing that you ensure that you go to the gym every single day sometimes multiple times a day why would you buy a freaking stair stepper tiktok stupid impulses um so anywho i was like girl you want this and she was like yeah i was like you want this dog bag yeah you want this mirror she said no and then my other friend i'm like you want this rug yeah i'm about to ask her if she wants my curtains and the curtain rock Girl, like when I tell you everything is going, it's wild. I'm about to be living in an Airbnb because whose house is this? Whose house is this? Um, but anywho, I'm about to sit in my car and worship a little bit. The song right now that has me in a chokehold is For Your Good by Maverick City. That song had me bawling my eyes out last night. I literally sat in my living room last night. This is going to be sound so dramatic to y'all, but I'm a very sentimental person. Oh, dang, all y'all come up to crunch, huh? He always went to Vasa. Um, anyway, I'm a very sentimental person, so this is right on par for me. But literally last night, I sat in the middle of my empty living room with the lights off, and I had my blue lights, and the windows were open, and I just worshipped. And for your good, he talks about the first line, I think, is like, I used to damn the deserts in the valleys, but now I thank you for those droughts. And there was another part that's like, I wish I would have known back then what I know now and I wouldn't have been so mad at you. Oh my God. And that just breaks me down. Cause I'm like, if that's not the truth, like, cause at the end of the day, you always have those moments where it's like, God, I see exactly what you were doing and I see why it had to happen. And man, I thank you. It didn't work out the way that I wanted it to. And so it was just like a moment of me sitting there and reflecting everything that has happened in this apartment and in this space. And my God, and just like thinking about the growth and everything, like Jesus, 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 Jesus. And it's crazy because Chelsea always checks me about this. Let me make sure this is still recording because what you're not going to do is play me, but still recording. Y'all really be watching me talk like this. Like y'all really just like hearing me talk like this has been, I really just be talking. I want to become a better vlogger. Y'all, I'm going to become a better vlogger because I don't like that I just sit here and talk. I want to real life be taking y'all with me and doing stuff. Don't, okay. Y'all, we're, we're about to transform. Just let me get settled. Anywho, 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 anywho. What was I saying? Oh, Chelsea always checks me about this because she's like, every time you learn a lesson, instead of taking that lesson and being thankful and applying it to move forward, you go back and I don't want to say she says you go back and you hate yourself. But like I go back and I talk down upon myself. Like I go back and I get mad about myself because I was literally just about to do that. I was worshiping last night and instead of just being like, okay, got it, lesson learned, I was so upset that I wasn't as grateful and as happy as I should have been in that spot. I feel like I spent so many times there just crying, so many nights there just being upset over things that didn't matter. Like last night, I just sat there and was like, why would you spend so much time about things that don't matter when this was a whole blessing? a whole blessing that you chose to ignore because you wanted to pout. You wanted to be a victim. And it's like, huh, I got to work on my mind not doing that. And that's going to have to be something I truly practice because that tore me up because I was like, man, if I could just have so much more time here, I want to do better. But it's like, you are going to do better, which is why you're being elevated to next. <sighs> Jesus. Anyway, I'm about to chill in here and listen to For Your Good. And I'll probably head in here at like 530 and yeah so the next time y'all see me will be after cycling y'all i'm back it is nine o'clock and when i tell you i had the best time of my entire freaking life 
um get out of my face like i had the best time of my entire freaking life and i'm not exaggerating about it i have learned today officially i am obsessed with cycling like your butt really does change form like so many people you know like your butt hurts it really does change and it gets used to it like my butt it probably hurt like five ten percent of the time but it was not bad at all so i could only imagine you keep going it doesn't hurt anymore and like you start to find your rhythm so everything just gets so exciting like i'm so obsessed to the point i want to go find a cycle bar that i could do it every day but i'm like kenzie slow down because i do this all the time and um this house that i'm moving into is way more expensive i don't need to be doing that so i'm like kenzie cycle when you can and call it a day because put the same pressure into your eating but this is what i be telling people like me working out isn't just about me losing weight because if it was then i would be putting the pressure there but no i just simply enjoy being active and that's like all it is like of course i have weight goals but that's just, i don't know how to explain it because like it is a focus but it's really not i just enjoy being active grow um, so I'm not going to sign up to something extra cycle bar because I think crunch only does it like three, four times out of the week. I want to do it every day. And like tomorrow they have a 545 in the morning, but it's already booked. Part of me wanted to wake up and uh, just happen to see if somebody didn't show up because that happens like all the time. Like we went in there, no spots left, but we went in there and there was like six empty spots. And I think that's kind of rude of people like don't reserve a spot if you're not going to be there because people really be wanting to come. Anyway. But y'all know I'm learning about my rest or whatever. And I'm like, that trainer dude would not approve. So we gonna get our rest. And they don't have another class for I mean, they do at six. But I got a volleyball game tomorrow. So I won't be able to do it. And now I'm sad. Um, so I think the next day I'll be able to cycle. I don't know if they have it Thursday. But they'll have it Thursday or Friday. And I'm gonna do it. And I asked her if I could go live while I do it. And she was like, yes. So next time I'm gonna try to get there early enough to get me in a corner. Because, you know, of course, I want to be considerate. I'm not going to have other people in my camera that, you know, they don't come there for that. So I'm going to make sure I can get in a corner and have, like, the camera just face towards me. It is so good. I feel like cycling class, not only is it, like, an amazing workout and you push yourself beyond what you ever could have imagined, but I feel like it's, like, freaking therapy, bro. It is freaking therapy. I love the affirmations that they do while you're working out. She made us scream like, I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. And it's just so good, especially because y'all know in the last week's vlog that I just dropped on Monday, I've just been going through it. And like, it's really something that you have to retrain your brain to think about. Because my main thing is like, when it comes to my ex, I'm always just like, why are you treating me this way? And I'll be trying to make it so personal. And I have to like get out of my own brain and be like, Mackenzie, this has nothing to do with you and everything to do with him. There's nothing wrong with you, bro. He simply chooses to do what he does. That don't got nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? So it just really takes a lot of rewiring that has to happen. But it's like a day to day battle because I wanted to text him today and just go off. Like, why do you keep wasting my time? But then I had to ask myself, like, what is it that you're looking to get out of this? Because I bet you, if he texts back, you're still going to be irritated and not want, not want anything. So why are you wasting your words? And then if you say something, it's going to feed his ego like, mm -hmm, she's upset, she's tight. No, baby, I'm not. We're healing and we're moving on. Um, but anywho, outside of the cycling, best workout because... Trey, get you a friend that's on your level when it comes to the gym because I have never in my entire life worked out my upper body that hard. And I can't, I'm not lying when I say never. I, I'm not a fan of upper body. Everyone has their things. Like she's not really a fan of lower body. I'm not a fan of upper body. So I'll do like three machines and be ready to go. I'll do like the lat pull down, some bicep curls and some shoulder presses and be done. I've never been the one in like the free weights and things like that. This girl is a badass, okay? This girl was in the freeways and we... What are you doing? Oh, freaking hate people. So we're on the bench or whatever and we're doing shoulder presses and this girl goes and picks up, I think she started with 20s. I went and picked up 12.5. The look this girl gave me, she looked at me and was like, and I was like, I should go lighter, huh? Because mind you, I don't really do upper body. So I'm like, 12.5 was already pushing it in my mind. 
And she was like, sit down and do it. I did like two. And I said, whoo. She said, how'd that feel? I said, I mean, it felt kind of light. She went and got me, I think, no, I think she started at 25 and she got me 20. It was something like that. And I was like, you're crazy. Bro, I put it up. We did the first rep was 12s. I think we did like 12, 8, and two working sets of six. That was like our rhythm for most of the part. I worked up to a freaking 35, 35 dumbbells in each one. And I see now, I wish I was sitting down to show y'all when you'll see people sitting down in one of them bench chairs and to lift up the waist, look up, oos, oos. I, I understand now because that's, that's exactly what had to get done because the hardest part was getting the weight up. I tried 40, couldn't get 40. Mind you, I could get six 35s up. I was able to get six, right? And then um, that's 70 pounds. That's wild. Anyway. Who would have freaking known that five pounds, well, I guess it's 10 pounds, would have felt that much? And so they had a, instead of 40, I couldn't do 40, so we tried 37.5. Who would have known an extra five pounds would have felt that much? I could not do it. 35, that last set, baby, I was burnt out. But that's why it's so important to kind of have some help when you're in the gym and somebody that's on your level. Because if I never worked out with her, I would have never in my life even thought to pick up some weight like that. So I'm like, this is going to be exciting. And I'm like, at this point, girl, we're going to have to get us some pen and a paper and write us down a solid schedule because I like working out with you. I like working out with you. I do. I do. Anyway, so with it being 9 o'clock, um, I'm about to – we did a whole lot of other things, y'all, and we, we killed it. We did. We did. We did a whole lot, and I don't know the names or nothing, so it really don't even matter. Uh, I thought the coolest part of it was, I was like, you have to listen to this song and tell me how you feel when you're lifting. So one of my favorite weightlifting songs is Mount Everest by Labrinth. I think it's called Mount Everest. Ain't got shit on me, cause I'm on top of the world. And then the bass drops, mm. okay, I'm gonna stop. Anyway, and so I was like, you gotta listen to this song. She was like, well, you gotta listen to this song. And her song is, shut your mouth and roll me like a river, like a river. Boom, like a river, hang on out there, rock me like a... So yeah, we just had a great time. I thought that was so cute. Like, let's not us swapping songs or whatever. Oh, the last thing I'll freaking say, bro, I was I was so happy that she was able to witness how God be playing in my face sometimes. Because I feel like people be thinking I'm dramatic when I be telling them my stories, how God be playing in my face. And I say that in the most respectful way. So there's this one white man. Y'all know I like my black kings, okay? But there's this one white man where I'm like, that is the exception. What the heck? So he was the one that I told you guys came from my last gym and now he's here. He was here today. And when I tell you dang near the whole workout session, did somebody honk at me? Because I will punch you. Um, When I tell you like the whole freaking workout session, bro, this dude and his partner are right in front of our faces. And I looked at her and I was like, you see how God be playing with me, right? Because this big old gym, why is this man right in our vicinity? You would have freaking thought we were freaking like uh, tag teamers working out together. Two dudes, two girls all came to lift some weights together. That's how freaking close and in sync we were. And I'm just like, God really be playing because God know my story. God know my feelings. And he know I want this, man. Why are you playing? You ever tell a bitch I got jeans? You ever make a video in her knee? Oh, well, guess what? I'm JP. I got a bitch say, hey, oh. I'll shake it to my bitch. I say, DJ, can you put this on? Oh, yeah. Hey, bookies. It is Wednesday. It is 9.45. And I'm on the way home. It's been such a long day. So, of course, I had work this morning, and then after work, I went straight to our gym because we had a volleyball game at 6.15, and then after volleyball, I came over here to crunch because, mind y'all, I still have that Stairmaster challenge where I'm wanting to do 20 days out of this month, and it's like, I don't know where this month took me, but baby, we're already halfway into the month, and I'm not even halfway done with the challenge. I mean, after one more day, I think it'll be day 10. I've done nine days so far, and my goal is to hit 20. I don't got no more days to spare because then I'm going to get to a point where it's like I can't miss a day and I ain't trying to get that tight. Um, if I'm to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to make the 20 days, but I'm going to try my best. Boy, let me tell you something. That Stairmaster is wearing me the freak out. My period is on the way and I started cramping like the last seven minutes. I swear I felt like I was about to fall out and pass out, but I am just not a quitter, bro. I am not a quitter. 
um i've gotten back into the habit so like it's crazy because if i'm to be honest like before i really got into sermons i started listening to eric thomas david goggins um miles monroe like i was listening to like motivational speakers and stuff like that like those um compilation motivational speeches and stuff that you can find that has them all like together I was listening to those and those would get me pumped up. And that's what I listened to today when I was on the Stairmaster. And it was so good. It had like clips of Steve Harvey in it, Eric Thomas, Miles Monroe, David Goggins. It was such an amazing mix and stuff like that really keeps me motivated because it's like, yes, I'm cramping and yes, I don't feel good. And yes, I want to quit. But I have to remember that ultimately I am the one that's in control of my mind. You know, I'm the one that's in control of what's going on here and my body like unless my body just falls out then i get to tell my body what we doing and i said we're finishing this 30 minutes baby um so let's let's digress so i had great intentions this morning i got to work and i had me some ratio yogurt which is great because i asked 25 grams of protein in it i mixed in some chia seeds and had strawberries and i was like oh babe you're off to an amazing start a healthy queen feeling skinny um but no it was my team leader's birthday well his birthday is tomorrow but he's not going to be there so he's obsessed with Little Caesars. So somebody on the team ordered all the Little Caesars, deep dish, all the things. And yes, I indulged. I had all the pizza, ordered me some wings, had a great time. And for, I don't want to say I give myself a pass because my period is coming. Because I just just shut up, kids. Just shut up. I don't even care about just shut up. Um, so yes, I indulged and I had way too much pizza. And I'm already bloated because my period is coming. So it's just i feel humongous which is another reason i was like girl you gotta go to the gym the same way hold on y'all because when there's cops like when there's cops over here i don't be knowing for real you know how like when we was growing up and they would say like you can't have your lights on while you're driving or you're gonna get pulled over i don't know if like that's true anymore or not because like, i don't know i just be scared i don't think it's true but i still be like I still be extremely cautious when I'm like passing cops and my flash is just on, you know what I mean? Um, what was I talking about? So yeah, I indulged in all of the pizza and yeah, I was like, girl, I don't care if you don't feel like going to the gym. And that's what made me get through the Stairmaster too. I don't give a damn that you're tired. You was big and bad enough to eat all of that goddamn pizza. You won't be big and bad enough to sit up here and finish this session out. And it's just on period. Don't even know. How we end upon this road. And even though we are grown, girl, I just want you. They was listening to that in there, and baby, that is my gym. I cannot believe it is like 10 p.m. What am I doing with my life? It's because of freaking volleyball. We're playing basketball. We're playing basketball. Oh, man, I feel like I'm going to be up all night when I should have lost my mind. <laughs> you showed up right on time. God, you took me through the valley. Woo! Come on! I'm sorry, y'all. I had a Nalani new, and I don't know if I worked it all the way out, but I just know that I worked it out to my capacity. Anyway, so where was I? So I did all that. We won the volleyball game, and then I went to Crunch. It was so freaking funny, bro, because I told y'all about my white man husband that don't know he my husband yet right and so i was at work and the topic came up again because i'm not the only single woman on the team and we'd be talking about this or whatever and it came up again about approaching men and how do y'all feel about approaching men and of course all the men is like we actually love it men are shy especially in the gym in today's culture men ain't trying to approach no woman so they're like you need to go and do it and we're gonna follow up with you tomorrow it was so funny because it was such a heated debate between the men and the women today and i was like this poor man don't even know that he's sitting up here having a great day at work just minding his business and don't know that we're literally holding a meeting right now on how to bag this man like they don't even know that we're about to bag this man anyway that was just funny and that was really random anyway he wasn't at the gym today so it is what the freak it is and it is what it's gonna be <laughs> um let me find out i haven't been this hype kenzie at night in a minute because y'all know when i used to go to the gym at night and then i'll be talking y'all anyway i am so off topic circle back <clears throat> okay so when i got to the gym everything was like extremely packed i was not planning on deadlifting today but I'm like, is that where the Lord is continuing to push me? Because that 
and then like that was the only thing that was open was like the lifting area and i was like don't just skip over the lifting area because all the machines are taken like you know what you do like i didn't feel like racking no weights i didn't feel like doing none of that but it is what it is we're here to work out baby get your workout in so i was really proud because y'all know i think it was like on monday or tuesday i deadlifted and i couldn't even pick up 285 today i picked up 285 twice but the way that the way that the 285 fell i knew for a fact i couldn't do 300 so i didn't even try i don't know how i did 300 that first time there is like that is wild to me if i didn't have that on video i wouldn't believe it so i deadlifted i did some belt squats which hurt me so bad my quad is extremely tight i'm gonna have to stretch that out i did some weighted k they weren't cable kickbacks it was on the little machine i did some weighted kickbacks and um i think that's all i did because then everything was still taken and then i got on the stairmaster and i suffered in silence for 30 minutes it's wild because i pray to god that nobody is around me without headphones because for whatever reason it makes me feel better when i can release sounds and i kid y'all not i will be on that stairmaster this is so unattractive so don't y'all be judging me i'm just trying to tell y'all how i get through i don't know why it makes me feel better but it does sometimes i'll just be on i'm like Ugh. 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 that sounds so bad and like i'm just being real i don't know why that makes me feel better but sometimes i have to grunt my way through it and it just makes me feel better bro so after i died on the stairmaster for 30 minutes i don't care how late it is i'm going to the sauna and it's crazy because my friend trey was like the sauna is like punishment for me and i'm like the sauna is the cherry on top for me like baby you deserve go in there and sweat it out so i went in the sauna for 10 minutes probably would have stayed longer but i'm like babe it's kind of late and you got kids at home waiting for you they probably think you got traffic to something and so i was like get out of that and then i was like because you deserve we're gonna go get a massage so we did the hydro massage and i listened to my worship music and it was an amazing time and let me tell you something i'm gonna make a whole video on dealing with the narcissist and healing from a narcissist and just bear with me because i know we're all over the place but the ex that i told y'all about baby Oh, I knew better. Oh, I knew better. You deserve better. Whoo! Look at you thinking you couldn't live without him. I can't say that. Why is that thing so fast? Look at you thinking you couldn't live without him. Now look at you living. Hey, look at you doing way better. And now out of your feelings. Yeah, your butt just came back and your ass is getting a little bigger. <laughs> now look at you. What's the song? I don't know the song. Look at you thinking you can live without him. Now look at you living. Yeah. Look at you doing way better and all out of your feelings. Yeah. Your edges came back and your ass is getting a little bigger. Hmm. And look at you. I don't know what that. And look at you in there. Oh. You deserve, you deserve it. You can do better. I don't. <laughs> I hate when I forget songs that I once loved because I don't make no sense. I know when I turn this camera off, I'm going to remember it exactly. But anyway, I just really knew better. And like dealing with the narcissist is honestly the most traumatizing thing I've ever experienced in my life. Because even after all of the growth and self-work that I've done, he pulled the narcissist stuff on me again and really had me questioning my own self. And I'm just like, I, no, 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 no. I'm not crazy. And you're not about to make me feel like I'm crazy. So that's all I'm going to say on that. And I'm about to give it all to the Lord. And we're going to have to do some real self-healing, some deep work because we can't be doing that no more. So I'm just, that's all I'm going to say right now. But I feel like I'm going to make my whole separate, like a separate video about dealing with the narcissist. Uh, <laughs> if y'all have questions or like want me to talk about certain things when it comes to that topic, please let me know because we can have a whole discussion and I will literally read it off as a list and we're going to talk about it because you're all tired. But thankful to the Lord teaching me grace because I wanted to beat myself up, but it's like, no. You prayed to have this top off healing. You prayed for this final layer of healing. And I feel like this is what that was. So you can't be mad at what it is that you asked for, period. Anyway, it is 10 p.m. And my dogs are probably calling the cops right now thinking that I'm not coming back home. So I'm going to see y'all later and I'm going to see y'all in the morning. I love you. But you're doing way better in all out of your feelings. Look at you doing way better in all out of your feelings number three i got this look at you doing way better in all out of your feelings your way just came back and your ass get a little bigger girl fuck that little nigga girl fuck that little nigga yeah because you don't deserve that you don't deserve that you don't deserve that 
you gotta do better ha! cookies it is thursday it's 609 i took off today because your girl just wasn't feeling good i was not feeling good and like it sucks because I move next week and I would have much rather have used an off day in my new place than to have stayed home. Uh, but I just wasn't feeling well. So I'm just like, it's going to be cool. Can just get you an off day and just enjoy the last days that you're going to have in this apartment. And it's funny. I say, enjoy the last days as if I did anything. When I tell you I slept all day, um, literally slept all day. And it wasn't even like a depression kind of sleep. I was cramping, but my period's not coming. I just, I told Chelsea, oh, I was supposed to call her back. I'm going to talk to y'all later. Y'all, hey, I'm back. It's 9-16. This was the hardest workout I have ever done in my life. And it's definitely because uh, I worked out today with Trey again. And she has a coach. I don't know. I don't know if the proper name for this coach is a lifting coach, but I know she has interest in power lifting. So she has a coach that helps her with that or whatever. So they make workouts for her and I do them with her. And first of all, it's just so funny because she told me that she was trying to get out the gym by 630. It's 916. I was like, I'm sorry, not sorry, but we had a blast. I did legs yesterday, but she was doing legs today. So I was just kind of like, whatever it is, what it is, let's do it. Um, we're going to have to get on a schedule, though, because doing legs back to back, that was a lot. But it was great. We did some. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to talk to y'all. OK, and turn at the same time. What do we do today? Y'all, we did a lot, man. So we did some RDLs. That was the first thing we did when we got there. We did some RDLs. Um, I'm going to have to figure something out because my hands, I feel like I can do so much more, but my hands start to slip and my grip slips. Um, she has some wraps. I didn't like those, man. Those were hard to get adjusted to. I need to find me some gloves. I have some gloves, but they're too thick. And I found that like when they're too thick, it still affects my grip. And I don't like that. I want some really thin gloves with good cushion right here. I don't know if I just need to wrap my own hands or what. But anyway, so we started out with some RDLs. We did some lunges on the smith machine and i hated everybody in a mama for that because okay storage cut out but i'm back so then we did the smith machine for some lunges hated everybody in a mama for that and then we went and did some hamstring curls and that was terrible and then i love me some belt squats and so i introduced us to that and then we did some glute kickbacks and then did some side lunges and baby we were done and i was like that's completely fine because you want to torture me well i'm gonna torture you right back and we're gonna get your cardio in so i made her do her 30 minutes of the stairmaster with me because she'd be trying to act like she don't need no cardio and she'd be running away from it no you're trying to torture me i'm gonna torture you back anyway my husband was there again today and i was just admiring from afar um, so yeah, I didn't go to work today because it was just a lot going on. Didn't feel good. And just, you know, taking up the last moments I have in this apartment. It was funny because while I was in the gym today, I'm looking at the camera. I didn't lock my dogs up in the kitchen because I don't got no couch. I really don't got nothing for them to, I thought, do nothing crazy with. But they literally lose their mind if I'm not at the house. Like, I'm looking at the camera and I just see them attacking something. I'm like, what the hell are they doing? I feel like these Negroes are sitting up there biting on my rug. I'm popping their tails when I get home. I'm popping their tails because I really feel like they know better. They know better. But if I'm not there, they literally be like, mama's gone. Let's turn up. I will punch. No, I won't punch them, but I'm just talking. Anyway, I had an amazing time. I'm so happy that I went to, uh, did the workout because I wasn't going to. I just wanted to sit in bed. I was just really exhausted. I'm going to Walmart now for a few items before I go home. And I'm excited to go home and eat and chill and watch my show. This shower is going to be the best shower of my entire life. So that's going to be exciting too. Um, I don't remember if I told you guys, but yeah, um, before I went to the gym, I had to go to the bank to get me a new card and sign this dispute form because somebody decided to buy Amazon stuff, $300 of Amazon stuff on my card. And I was like, that was not me. $300? Why would you go steal from Beyonce or somebody that got the funds to be stolen, baby? I don't got the funds to be stolen. Don't mess with me, please. Anyway, so that was my day. But I'm excited that tomorrow is Friday. 
And it's crazy to think that we are exactly a week away from me moving. And I'm just like, wow, 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 wow. The routine that I have had for six years is going to change. And I am so nervous, so excited. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited too because Trey and I will be like in walking distance from each other. And that's going to make me super happy because especially like coming from somebody who like battles with depression on and off, I need somebody that will just pull up on me and be like, girl, get up. Like, I'm sure like for a fact, like 1000%, I'll be upset. Like, girl, leave me the freak alone. But it's one of those things where it's like, I don't care how you feel. What do you need? You know what I mean? That's one of those things. Um, so I'm excited that she'll be in walking distance of me. And I told her she can pull up. Honestly, I might even give the girl a key. Pull up on me. Because I don't I don't have time to be sitting in no more funks. You know what I mean? And then she's like, girl, same. Pull up on me because she struggles with consistency going to the gym. Y'all know that's not my problem. So I will be banging on her door. I was like, we were joking because I was like, your fiance is going to open the door. I'm like, can Trey come out and play today? Is Trey home today? Anyway, I'm about to go on Walmart, get what I need to get, and I'm going to talk to y'all tomorrow. Okay. Can I show my love for you?